Hello ladies and gentlemen and the other day somebody had asked me that can you show the example of a person who has had a very 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 happy married life and yes somehow luckily I have one chart <laughs> I don't have many charts like this but this is an exceptional chart so so here it is marital happiness many people keep asking will I have marital happiness will I ha will I have good married life or whatever you call it after your marriage your life improves so how do you know that so there are these uh, there are many positions which we will see in this chart and we will see the link of different houses which contribute towards this so this is not just going to be a video on seventh house or uh, venus although we can obviously see the strength of both the seventh house and venus here but i will also put uh, my focus on some other points which people do not focus generally okay and yes now uh, we will be ignoring other details which are not relevant to the topic like career or how many affairs this person has had or when this person is born or which dasha is running etc i do not have the permission to reveal all the details and i will also not reveal details of the spouse of this person so let's start and now you may think oh i also have these combinations but will i have a happy married life or no or why my married life is not that great or maybe it is good but it's somehow going so for that we need to check other things like we have to check panchang then there are divisional charts about which i'll be speaking very soon which till arson will be coming uh, in my to our to, the, to my channel on september hopefully and he will speak on the navamsha he might come in by the end of august also so i will send him a mail today all right so if you're new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation regarding your marriage or your affair your love romance or your career and you want to know how things will be or how to improve your life in general then you can always go to my website and book a reading and then we will uh, see the whole chart and give you the final result all right and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so now first things first see what's happening here is for happy married life there's something which is very important now happy means uh, we cannot control how much happiness is there in our marriage but at least we can be having that focus that uh, we be committed to one person and we do things that makes the other po the opposite partner happy okay we do not do things that the other person doesn't like and we do not try to denigrate the other person we do not try to pull the other person down or keep pinpointing their faults and generally we follow the good norms of any healthy relationship so for that it is very essential that the lagna lord is well placed because the lagna lord will show the ideals okay so here you see because this lagna is of uh, scorpio so mars is the lord and mars is sitting in leo which is fantastic and it is in the 10th house it is in directional strength so this makes the chart very 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 powerful so basically whenever the lagna lord is in 10th what i have seen in my experience is these people are committed towards anything if they are opening a company they will be committed if they are married to one person they will be committed if they are having children they will be committed to their children because 10th house is also the house of commitment it is the house of vows resolutions people only see the 10th house for career and name fame status but unless you are committed to something you cannot have authority in that field so this position is fantastic even for marriage now lagna lord placed in the 10th house now this can act in a difficult way sometimes for marriage that the person is too much focused for career okay that can be one problem that also i have seen that their marriage life is not very great in general but in this chart that cannot hold true because the seventh house is very prominent because you see there are three planets here and uh, that will command a lot of time and attention okay apart from the fact that the lagna lord is in the 10th house so that is one thing and the other thing is this house is also very prominent you see three planets and that too sun is placed there so that e also makes the uh, seventh house more prominent apart from the 10th house okay so the problem which comes when the lagna lord is in 10 that the person is too much focused with career and not at all focusing on the marriage that issue will not come here or rather if i would put it in a different way the person will not be able to focus too much on career because the marriage will be very demanding because you see there are three planets here they will not let him uh, 
sleep in peace they will always say oh you need to focus on your marriage on your wife on your opposite partner you just can't stay home uh, in the office working 24 hours you see that cannot happen so forcefully by choice or either ways you call it the person will be forced to attend to his marriage because of the presence of three planets okay so that is one thing uh, which is balancing out the lagna lord in the 10th that factor which gives troubles in marriage sometimes but in general it is very good for commitment okay so now this commitment factor is helping because the marriage house is also prominent so the uh, marriage is prominent and the person is committed to whatever it is to whichever person he is married so that is a very strong factor now there are some difficulties in the chart for example moon is debilitated here okay and uh, but although it is in scorpio it is not in fourth pada of vishakha which is in 0 to 3 degrees where it is considered debilitated it is outside of scorpio i i, I mean it's outside of vishakha so you cannot call it a very bad debility here and uh, in scorpio lagna moon is not a ordinary planet it is the ruler of the ninth house okay so the ninth lord whenever the ninth lord is coming in association with the seventh house or the seventh lord then it is considered to be very good for marriage because that is one of the raj yogas that shows that the blessings of the gods are there in your marriage in some form or the other that doesn't mean you will have a great married life but somehow you will be able to see the higher picture ninth house shows higher things okay so generally i have seen in my experience when the ninth house is associated with the seventh house then uh, people can sometimes uh, even if they have differences they tend to overlook the differences because they say that oh everybody has problems now nah, we should try to help others not try to pull others down so that happens here because moon is the ninth lord and it is sitting in the lagna so lagna lord in the ninth is a fantastic combination to have in any chart even if it is a malefic it is a fantastic combination to have apart from that it is aspecting the seventh house and the seventh lord venus itself that is again fantastic mind blowing it is so these are beautiful combinations which this person has then you see jupiter is also very strong in the chart it is in own sign in pisces it's extremely strong there and that too it's in the fifth house and anybody with jupiter in the fifth if other combinations support the person is a great devotee of lord shiva so this person is a great devotee of lord shiva and planets in taurus also show the blessings of lord shiva okay to some extent and if you see jupiter here is aspecting moon here in the lagna with its ninth aspect so it is aspecting the lagna also and the ninth house also and it is also aspecting moon which is the karaka for mind so this is also very 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 beautiful in the chart so the fifth lord aspecting the ninth house and the ninth and the ninth lord and the lagna and sitting in the fifth house itself is fantastic and the second house is also ruled by jupiter so jupiter is not only the ninth lord it is also the second lord of family so whenever the second lord is associated with moon or the lagna then the person is very much conscious about his family the person works to maintain his family very wholeheartedly okay so these are combinations which are adding on to this now apart from this if you see uh, the obvious things is uh, venus is situated in own sign in taurus it is very strong there it is forming malavya mahapurush yoga which means all the comforts and luxuries and beauty marital happiness romance love sexuality everything will be bestowed to this native depending on the other combinations of course there are millions of people who will have uh, mahapurush yoga pertaining to venus but that doesn't mean that they are having marital happiness now i will uh, i mean that doesn't mean they are, they will not have any problems in marriage of course this person also might have some issues in marriage but generally uh, as i know the person he always keeps telling i have had a very happy married life very nice my wife has been very cooperative she has been uh, very supportive in all my endeavors that is what you need after all in a marriage so uh, you see the blessings of venus uh this is completely flowing in the chart and then the second thing is you see this seventh lord which is venus is situated in own sign okay so seventh lord in seventh house this is another very strong factor for married life so whenever the seventh lord is in the seventh house it shows that the focus of the marriage is in 
protecting the marriage so wherever the seventh lord shows that area is the focus of the marriage okay so when the seventh lord is sitting in the seventh house itself so the focus of the marriage is to protect the marriage at any cost okay so that is why it is considered very good for married married life but that is not it the lord of the 11th house which also shows gains network circles and gains of any kind that is also sitting in the 7th house 11th lord in the 7th or 7th lord in the 11th is fantastic for married life even the presence of the second lord in the 7th or 7th lord in the second is also considered to be fantastic for marriage okay now uh, venus somebody can say that venus is also the 12th lord here and it is situated but it is also the 7th lord okay so there could have been some difficulty somewhere of course every marriage will have some difficulty no marriage is free of without any difficulty but uh, here venus is very strong and that too it is with mercury which is a friend and uh, it is also the 11th lord and now now somebody may say that oh but sun is an enemy sun is also there well that is true but sun is very far so the conjunction is uh, actually not valid and i mean it's there but the degree difference is so far that venus is not getting harmed by sun it is not combust or it is like way 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 uh, away from the sun so uh, sun is not able to harm the person okay and even if you see for career the 10th lord which is sun is sitting in the seventh house it is also considered to be very good because seventh house is the tenth from the tenth house so that is also considered to be very good for marriage and apart from that mercury is also a friend to venus so this can uh, give a lot of understanding in the marriage this can give lot of uh, uh, this can give an ability to understand the other person even if you think the other person is wrong it's something like saying let's agree to disagree that which is required very much in marriage and apart from that the biggest factor here is you see all the malefics you see ketu you take saturn you take mars you take rahu except sun all the other four malefics they are not aspecting either venus or the seventh house or seventh lord that is why i'm saying this is a very rare chart you will not find any chart like this you will find it but very rarely you will find okay so mars is aspecting the lagna the fourth house and the fifth house and saturn is aspecting the 5th house the 9th house and the 12th house and rahu is aspecting the 12th house the 4th house and some also take the second house aspect so it is aspecting the 9th house but it is not aspecting venus nor the 7th house nor the ruler of the 7th house so whenever no whenever a house is having no afflictions that shows that the natural functioning of the house is unobstructed okay now uh, the person has a double affliction of mars and saturn to jupiter because that's how karma is somewhere or the other the affliction will be there if not necessarily in marriage then in some other place so uh, there could have been some difficulties with children in having birth of the first child but i have not inquired about all those so i don't know much about that and apart from that um, if you see this person is also born in a uh, purnima okay uh, it's not exactly purnima but sun and moon are seven houses apart so m- the moon is receiving all the light of the sun so it is a very healthy moon there you see and uh, if you go more deep the 10th lord sun and moon is the 9th lord so the 9th lord and 10th lord are in mutual aspect and it is known as the most famous the best of all yogas which is known as dharma karmadhipati yoga which is forming in this chart okay so because of that also the person is very much committed it is said uh, yudhishthir maharaj who is the most famous character from the mahabharat one of the most famous characters he had this yoga okay so this person is a very nice person when it comes to marriage and uh, commitment etc so these are the factors that i wanted to say not only the fact that venus is in own sign or unafflicted or seventh house is unafflicted na? apart from that also there are many other factors which i had shown the second house the 11th house then the 9th house the 5th house so all these things are linked so whenever we study astrology and we uh, see that some things are not working well that is because uh, there are 
certain things which we are missing so whenever we talk of marriage we have to always see the strength of the second house the fifth house seventh house ninth house eleventh house these houses are very important one two three four five and of course the lagna is also important so six houses you see so just seventh house is not marriage because many people can have great a great seventh house but it doesn't mean that they will always have a good marriage okay so here we see all the houses are well placed the lords except for the fact that moon is in debility i mean sign wise not degree wise and apart from that all the uh, combinations are very well uh, demonstrated here in this chart okay so there you go and uh, some of you might think now oh my god i don't have these placements will i have a happy married life or not well we have to see the whole chart okay so just because you don't have these placements it doesn't mean that you will have a miserable married life okay and and on the other hand just because you have these placements some of these placements it doesn't also mean that you will also have a happy married life that will depend on so many other factors as i said like panchang and divisional charts and tithi vara there are so many things which i uh, will not speak here due to the interest of time all right so if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation regarding your marriage or your uh, other areas related to career etc then you can always go to my website and book a reading you will find the link to my website in the description of this video and watch all me my other videos okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye